How are we doing, everyone? And welcome back to another edition of FSI's NASCAR DFS Pick Show. I am your host, TK Nation 47, joined by Mega Roller 31. Andrew, how are you doing this evening? And did you cash on your truck slate? I'm doing great. I played $32 at 147. My Boom. Key lineup was taken out in that crash. But luckily, my <laughs> was, um, was good. Tanner Gray looks great from all towards the end. I could have made a little bit more, but hey, 147. And for thirty-one dollars, that's some definitely some ROI. Love it. Perfect. Yes, I, I bet about 40, 50 bucks. Won about sixty-nine, seventy dollars. So, uh, pretty profitable for me as well in my uh, GPP strategy as always. But uh, we did pretty well on this truck video yesterday, and the picks turned out well. And qualifying gets rained out. So the same day qualifying NASCAR is trying to implement is actually meant nothing and. Along those lines for tomorrow, I think this could be the case as uh, we have rain in the forecast for the majority of the day, but it is only 30 to 40 percent. So I think if they can get lucky, they're going to try to qualify Cup and Xfinity. I think if one of them has to go, it is going to be Xfinity. We could see what we saw tonight where they just do this based on the previous race like they have been doing. So um, we kind of have a good idea heading in uh, with some practice as well. Mega, why don't you explain uh, what we're looking at here and uh, how you have things shaken out in the model? Well, what we did was just similar to yesterday. Um, I first had them kind of ranked. Uh, there's a blank column here, which I should put a title on. Um, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just call it track. So, so basically yesterday we ranked the trucks by uh, what their composite speed was for like about five similar tracks. We took Kansas, Las Vegas, a little bit of Atlanta, um, some previous um, times at, at Charlotte, uh, Kansas this year. So it gave us a pretty good uh, indication of how they did on these like one and a half to two mile tracks. So um, we use that as like their speed ranking as their kind of their starting position if they had qualified. But now we have the luxury of actually having a practice. So I took their practice speed and I made that their starting position as if it was qualifying and then I'm also still using the track data their season data and um, their track history here to um, kind of predict what their finishing place might be and there's a couple things out of whack like Bill Bassett had the fourth um, <laughs> and um, his track composite was is 34th the projection algorithm has them finishing third, which we know that's not going to happen. So um, <laughs> there are a couple of glitches here that we'll point out to you. So this isn't exactly the word of God, but when we did plug in the actual qualifying order into the sheet with all the other matrixes, like the plays that really, you know, popped were the ones that the guys that we had in um, blue and green that moved down like we thought they'd be closer to the top but when they did it based on last race they were down in the 20s and and they were the ones that it was like Akis and um Chandler Smith and um Gray. yeah yeah there was like um Majeski moved like all the way down to like in the 30s and it was perfect they just popped right out on the sheet and um people played them from you know our that we sent out the course to and you know we made money so hopefully it yep. happens again today i have a good idea or a good a good feeling that is going to happen as well um yeah 10 a.m qualifying does not look like a promising start so uh but let's get into some picks here uh with the model that we have presented to us and um right now we have an a composite speed number one ranking is a guy that doesn't necessarily finish rate or uh, we have this updated. I'm sorry. I'm staring at the old one. The updated with practice data. We have Brandon Jones and Daniel Hemrick, uh, two guys that were really fast in the 10 lap average. Uh, Mega, are these two drivers interesting uh, to you tomorrow? I think that I don't know. I, I, I have them yellow because to me, and the way we like color this, if you didn't watch the video yesterday, the blue were like studs that we were going to probably build around the green cash plays that we felt good about yellow were maybe cash, but there was like one little hiccup. So we thought more GPP. And then I have one red one. That's a fade for me. And then I have a couple of guys that are um, a, a tannish color, which to me is just kind of 
signifies if they qualify too high, then I'm not going to be able to play them because they're not going to be a value. So the problem with Jones is he gets into trouble and, and wrecks a lot. So that really concerns me. And the problem with Hemrick is I think the dude's raced like 200 races through all the series. And I don't think he's won once. Now, I do know this is close to his hometown. So, you know, maybe tomorrow will be the magic day where he gets his first win. But, um, yeah, I don't even know. They had some fans in the, the stands there. So, but I don't think it's really a factor. It's not like a basketball game where you can really hear it cheering over the, you know, engines and all the other sounds of the track. But, but who knows? So, the, these guys, so, I think, are, are okay in GPPs. Like, they're Gibbs racing cars. They're, we saw the Toyotas dominate in trucks tonight. I don't know if like there's a manufacturing advantage when it goes to like Xfinity and Cup. If we see that happen, then I think we'll definitely need to look at the Gibbs cars for um, the Cup race. If we do see like it's something to do with the manufacturing, uh, maybe the engines or but like the trucks and cars have different body styles. So I mean, it's nothing, you know, aerodynamics. You, you you're not going to go like from truck to car and it'd be like the same formula. So. Yeah, well, what I have so far here is um, last race, Daniel Hemrick finished 29th. So if qualifying does get uh, waterlogged out, uh, Hemrick has a really good opportunity starting further in the back of the field. Uh, we know he's got some speed with how he how well he did in practice. I think that's going to be a lock button kind of uh, format for him at 9K, I believe, 9,300. And same with Brandon Jones. I think he had a finishing position of 17th. So these two drivers could be starting in the back of the pack if if qualifying gets canceled out. So I like I like both of these drivers tomorrow. Um, you know, not to be a spoiler about you know guys down the road, but there's a certain young driver that was really fast in practice, kind of stuck out above the rest, and uh, he's in a similar body or a similar car in a Toyota. So. Uh, we could have a pretty good advantage from Gibbs this weekend slash uh, yeah, for the Gibbs cars. So uh, I don't mind these two next up. We have uh, AJ Allmendinger um, pretty much racing for a title this year. He finished second last week at the Cir circuits of the Americas. Um, AJ Allmendinger thoughts on a uh, title contender for tomorrow. And he's, he's been having a solid season and for someone who was just pretty much one that we thought is like a road course ringer uh, other than like having a mechanical problem at the martinsville race like he's been solid in very 10 um you know most of the the races they've raced 11 he's got seven top 10 seven top fives he's won a race so third in the standings yeah 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 so racing definitely. really well and even if he qualifies up top, I think he's kind of has like the John Hunter Nemechek factor where, you know, he is he the one that could get out there and lead 50, 60, 100 laps and, you know, really, you know. Yeah. So, if they, right. If they go based on last, yes, uh, last week's results, uh, we're going to see a Ty Gibbs, AJ Allmendinger front row. So, uh, I think experience could be the benefactor of the, you know, initial restarts and in, in the race. I think 54 might have a better car, but in the end, um, AJ Allmendinger is certainly a driver good enough to uh, compete at the front of the pack and dominate this race. Not a very expensive price tag either. You don't have to really stretch your lineup. So um, Jones, Hemrick, AJ Allmendinger, I love all three. Uh, in that 9k range next up is the uh, model breaker Dylan Bassett uh, the number 77 he is uh, pretty fast in practice to to a very big surprise uh, thoughts on Dylan Bassett in the $4,800 price range <laughs> well I mean the car's decent it's the one that um Austin, has to be Austin Dylan raced last week uh I, I, like Bassett, they had big hopes. Like they're gonna go and qualify for Daytona. I think they had it. Um, yeah, uh, they had, out. Was it Junior's team or RCR or somebody? They they had a decent car lined up that they um that they purchased to try to like kick start this guy's career. And it was rained out, and he's the one. And I think it was um 
Ty Dillon didn't make it. There, there are a couple like of people who are really hoping to like start the season strong and probably could have qualified their way into the Daytona race for Xfinity, but they couldn't because it rained out. So I uh, really haven't seen a ton of him. He's only raced two races this year, but his composite is uh, 34. Or I don't know, if, maybe he's not had two races. Maybe that was from last year's data. Um, I don't have an earmark there, so I apologize. But anyways, I think at the price at, at 48, he's he's in a good situation. And if he's like way down there, I'm not necessarily saying he's a cash play, um, but seeing him like have number four speed in practice, like it really piques my interest. I, I think that, you know, he's maybe he's, yeah, but 48 being the fourth fastest car in practice, if he starts down, probably would start like maybe dead last if it gets rained out. So like, why not lock him in? What, what do you have to lose at 4,800 if he starts 40th or 38th or how many other cars they take in? you know, like, like, what do you have to lose? You can't lose you any points. And that opens up so much roster cap room. Right. Well, the only problem is, is we have 44 cars trying to qualify tomorrow for this race. So if Dylan Bassett is on the outside looking in, it is because qualifying got rained out, which would be unfortunate. So hopefully um, we get qualifying to take place and he can qualify for the race the only unfortunate part to, to that is right. he could qualify the too same, high the same thing as daytona right so uh, unless it, you get like somebody that like a, a david star or a fincham or a godovic or somebody like that that qualifies gary Golden, weatherman and ryan vargas and they don't want to race and he really 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 wants to and they like give him his spot or he like takes their car which we've seen happen a few times before yeah uh so it's it's kind of a double-edged sword if if the qualifying gets rained out he probably doesn't race and if they do race he probably qualifies too high so um gpp only for those reasons uh if he's out of the race i can't use him and if he's qualifying he's gonna probably qualify too high uh next up we have uh a infamous return to the xfinity series it is chase briscoe driving the 99 car um this guy he's won a championship before in this series am i wrong i believe so yes yeah so chase briscoe um Combining, I believe, as you had told us uh, pre, uh, pre, t- pre start of the show here, that he is in a BJ McLeod car with RCR parts. Am I? Is that what I'm hearing? No, it's it's really confusing because the 99 has been a BJ McLeod oh. most of the year, but yeah. the 98 is a Stuart Haas, and what That's I've seen it. online Haas. a lot is that this was a Stuart Haas car also, which I believe was he was in the 98 before, so it's his old team. I don't know right. if he just got the 99 car for this race or, like, what's going on, or we've had it happen before in, like, Xfinity where it's supposed to be, like, one person and the car and the number and the paint scheme and the ownership, but it's really somebody else's, like, physical car that they just painted, so. Sure. Um, but looking at here, he was fifth in speed so obviously this is not a bj mcleod car because chase briscoe is a good driver but he's not good enough to take a bj mcleod car and <laughs> make it to the fifth fastest See, car. i i like i like this idea here for chase briscoe and it looks like the speeds there obviously he has the history lots of races under his yeah. book i just wonder is he... his last year he had nine wins last year he had yeah 16 top five 22 top tens like but this is where he needs to be this is where he should have stayed he probably yeah. could have won half the extended races this year if he stayed the problem i see is yeah you're in you know a stewart haas mold of a car but you still have that bj mcleod chassis or like you know what i mean like you're st- you're still driving a, a bj mcleod car not necessarily I just... like i said it, it might just be that they got the G- bj mcleod number in sponsor and paint scheme but it's yeah. actually physically a stuart haas car so that's not what worries me it might be the the team like who's the crew yeah. chief and who's crew like chief the and the setup right okay so there you go it that's at 11k that's what worries me um, I'm not paying for Chase Briscoe in the 98. I'm 
for 11 K I'm paying for a night, you know, a shell of it is, is the way I see it, but you know, not, not more so than it would be for, you know, Kevin Harvick last week, you know? So it's, it's just, it's up in the air for me. I don't know where I stand yet. I need to kind of dig into that a little bit more and I need to know where he's qualifying before I can get aboard. He could be, he could be mega chalk here because if it is, um, that BJ McLeod car is probably going to qualify in the thirties and, you know, there I would play it then yeah. if he's qualifying inside the top five, then I'm, I'm nervous. He'd be like 75% owned or something. If he qualifies like 30th and sure, even in that car, he, he's definitely going to get up into the top 10 could even win the thing. Possibly. So next up, we have Justin Haley and Ryan Sieg, uh, 79 and 7,200. These cars uh, playing uh, raced really well um, last week. Haley finishing ninth. Uh, Sieg uh, didn't fare too well, actually, only finishing 25th. Uh, so if qualifying gets rained out, Sieg could set up to be a decent play at 7,200. That's not too expensive. Your thoughts on him? And then why are we tan on Haley? Haley's tan because I think he's possibly the same situation as Dylan Bassett, where he's going to qualify too high for us to like be able to use him. There's going to be better situations of people that qualify behind him. They'll get placed differential, probably end up getting up ahead of him. But I just don't see Haley getting out and dominating a race with Briscoe and Alma Dinger and um, other guys that we haven't even named yet. Um, yeah. Cindric and uh, <laughs> Gibbs. <laughs> they're coming. Pretty much. Um, they're pretty much. Yeah, right. they're. So, so you, he's not even like a, probably a top five driver, but if he qualifies up there, I just see him moving backwards and losing. The model has him finishing. Oh, like 11th and Sieg finishing 12th. So Sieg, I think his, if he can go up, he's got a chance to, to progress and actually maintain points or, or gain points, even though his track capacity was 18. I mean, he's got one, yeah. top, one top five this year and um, five top tens, but he's uh, decent Haley, on top Haley, 20s. Yeah. Haley hasn't sniffed the top five yet. So that that's why I'm like, if, yeah. if, Haley, if Haley like qualifies like 22nd or something like that, then yes, I consider him. But if he qualifies in the top 10, no. Yep. I would have to agree. Leave it there. Next up, we have Ty Gibbs at 10 8. Uh, this was a really fast card today on the track. Uh, talk of the garage. Uh, that 54 machine, one of the fastest all year. Uh, Ty Gibbs. Except for when Ty pole. Dillon was driving it. Well, that's, you know, Ty Dillon. So the right tie is in the car now, and uh, we have speed, we have talent. Uh, Ty Gibbs just graduated high school. <laughs> what? Yes. Really? You swear to God. I He's saw like, it the other day. Me? Holy cow. He just finished he high could school. could be my kid. And he's probably going to make you some money this weekend. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, so uh, he could be on the pole. He could be top 10 starting position. I don't think it matters. 10-8. I actually like him over the Briscoe pick, so that's where I'm going to lean as far as uh, my favorite stud up top here. Um, if I got to start with Ty Gibbs and move to Almondinger or a Jones or a Hemrick, I think that's going to be my kind of build. So one of those three with Gibbs or two of those three kind of play, you know, is my – is my initial lean on roster construction at the top. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on Ty Gibbs? I, I think you want the next guy. Okay. Who's the and next guy? Three, Tyler Reddick. Right. He, uh, he is in 31. This, this Jordan Anderson car is fast. It yeah. is. It is good. Eighth last week. And he's probably, well, eighth last week. Okay. So that's where he probably would start. Right. If qualifying is rained out, but but yep. still, um, I'd have to think about it at that point. But I have him finishing like six. I could see him getting up and and leading top ten. I don't know. This this isn't like a multi high ride the wall track, so it's not no Reddick style. But I think he's got a little bit more talent than a lot of these drivers down here. For sure, besides the top five studs. 
they're or he's right in line with him. them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ty, I, I mean, I don't mind Tyler Reddick. Sure. It's a cup driver in, in an Xfinity series car. Car's not bad either. I just, I just question whether or not at 10 three, he's going to be able to do lead laps in this race with other guys. We've already mentioned Briscoe Gibbs, Almondinger. Like there's just not that many laps to go. I mean, there is 300 laps in this race. It's just uh, Tyler Reddick. 200, 300. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? I, I'm pretty sure I looked it up, but it was 300 laps. It's a 300, but it's 200 laps. Uh, it's a mile it and a half track. I gotcha. There's the catch. I don't know. Um, I personally, I'd rather play Gibbs. I don't mind Reddick if he's starting. No, I, I, it, I just talk about your pairings there. If you're pairing two studs up top, I'd like these two guys over the other guys that are above 10k oh and i was thinking if i play gibbs i'm going to shoot down to that 9k with okay. brandon jones or hemrick yeah. that's how i do it that's how i play the gpps my friend i go for the go for the throat <laughs> a finishing position um but yeah i don't mind reddick you seem to be higher on him than i am uh next up we have riley hirsch uh, he started 29th last week, finished in the top uh, 20. Seems to be his MO. Are you have any interest in the Riley Herbst mobile? Uh, uh, again, he is just, he's got a, what's his DNF rate? Hi. <laughs> 27.27. So it's almost that he's only finishing two out of three races. So it just, I don't know if he's if he qualifies way down, but we saw that movie a couple of weeks ago, and that didn't really yep. work out that great for us. So, yep, yeah, I I just I don't know. I passed over his name every single time. I have I usually I mean if he's starting in the, the late price 30s, is great. It's, it's seven eight. I mean seventy eight. I right. like that. I, I I'd have to consider it. Composite. Yeah, they've, they've been pricing him up, and they finally priced him down. If he if he is if he qualifies between sixteenth and twentieth, I'd consider him. Yeah, and he finished seven sixteenth last week. There we go. So, but now they're pricing him down, so we can start to play him. That's the difference. They usually had him around nine. He, he stays yellow because he doesn't always finish races. Exactly, but you know, a, a couple of weeks ago they had. They had him at like the nine K range because they're still they're still treating him like Trace Chase Briscoe and he's not. And now that they're starting to treat him like Riley Herbs, so um, it could it could work out. Uh, next up, we have Justin Allgaier at ten one. Any love for the seven and Junior Motorsports? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say love. I I like him. Like he's got a yeah, number six okay. back composite. Um, Finished third last finished week, thirteenth. So that's just losing yeah. a couple points. I don't know with all the other guys in this race. I just, I don't know if he's going to have a chance to get up there and lead a ton of laps. But, right. Um, um, he can surprise you. Like yeah. he's like, you know what I mean? Like he's a guy that you don't expect to ever do anything, and then you see he leads like thirty laps. You're like, well. <laughs> I need it all guys him, tonight. I, I played him the week he won, so I, you know, figured that one out. Yeah. And those are, that's like abrasive mile and a half tire wear track. That's kind of like his MO. And this is a flatter, more oval, two mile track. So it might not be his jam. But I think you always have to have a little bit of all guy or maybe like a pinch, 10% if you're doing like 20 lineups or. 50 yeah, lineups yeah, or something. yeah, definitely. Like I said, I have him marked as a cash play. He he led twelve percent. He's led twelve percent of the laps so far this year. He's got two wins. So yeah, he's had a good year lives. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we're just gonna have to make some decisions. Just seeing where these ten sure. guys fall because we still have Cindric down the line at ten, at ten five to consider also. So right. Uh, next up, we have Brett, uh, Matt Snyder, and Brett Moffat. I. My, I was my, up to that. It's one, it's that, that why silent. Yeah, it's late. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on these two? Uh, look like the prices are pretty right, and I hope they don't qualify pretty high up. 
Yeah, um, Snyder, if he qualifies in 15th to 20th, I'm, I'm good with. Brett Moffitt, um, he, he's put all his eggs into here. Like, this is the cheapest I've ever seen him, I think, at 6,100. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I, I feel he's like a cash play unless he qualifies in the top 10. Um, so if he's outside the top 10, especially if he's in the 15 to 20 range, then I think definitely going to lock him in just – just at that price, our motorsports, it's it's a good secondary team. It's a solid car, not many mechanical issues. So, yes. Uh, Brett Moffitt finished 12th last week, and Myatt Snyder finished 21st. So, I think uh, well, the price is right. The cars are right. I think they're fantastic GPP plays. Next up, we have Brandon Brown, 7K, and Jade Buford, 5K. Uh, Brandon Brown. Not bad car. Jade Buford. Like this, this, this like quiet like presence in like the top 15, like every single race. Like he, he, you don't hear like, oh, Brown passed another guy. Brown passed another guy. Brown's like charging for a lead. He's just, they, they talk about everybody else that's moving around. And then he's just like the center fixture there, like somewhere between like seventh and eighth and just constantly does well. I mean, he's wrecked a couple times, but. Like his DNF rate is only nine percent, which oh, is oh, oh really no good. Oh no, don't don't give him the Josh Williams jinx. <laughs> he is don't not do Josh it. Williams. He is not Josh Williams. This this guy is, is is good. So <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Again, it all depends on qualifying. Seven K like the play. Me too. Uh, Jade Buford, five uh, K, probably a guy that's going to either. Qualify too high because of being rained out because he finished 15th last week, or he's going to qualify too high because of practice speed. So probably a fade tomorrow. Um, next, next up we have Austin Sindrick at 10-5. Here it is. Uh, this decisions, is kind of surprising decisions. that he was only 16th fastest. His composite is three. So mm-hmm. finished fifth last week. That's where he'll always be, the top five. So if yeah. he qualifies... You're just going to have to pick your stud. Like in the truck race, Like I'm sitting there thinking, like, do I want John Hunter Neiman check? Do I want Sheldon Creed? You know, like, which one do I want? And I, I just, I'll just have to kind of relook at practice, look at qualifying, look at everything, and just you're just going to have to make one. Or like I've done before where I can't really decide... I'll build the rest of my lineup. I'll take my four core like mid value plays and yep. then I will rotate these guys up on top and I'll divide. That's exactly what I did today. I'll take like 25% of my cash and I'll have Almond Digger, I'll have Briscoe, I'll have Gibbs and I'll have Cindric in like all, all the blue guys here, each one of them and just divide my cash 25% on those and hoping that if one of them like goes off and is the star, then that might boom week to the gpp level but the rest of my lineup is solid and then you know i should maybe mid cash the rest of the lines yeah you just gave away my strategy sir i'm sorry (laughs) if you've listened in but no that's it's fine uh that's that's why we're here to help everyone out and give them the good knowledge and that is the good knowledge sir that is exactly what i did today and it was very profitable so uh didn't get first but certainly cashed enough of my core plays to uh profit enough so uh yeah Cindric Gibbs and then the guys we talked about with Jones Hemrick and Almondinger are, are my leans uh next up we have Alex Labby Rick, you're killing oh yeah me. I, no I way. guarantee you that Jones will be first probably the first one out of the race if, if it well if if Jones qualifies first then I'm not going to take him yeah. If, if Hemrick qualifies first, I'm still going to take him. But it, if Jones is qualified first, forget it. I just need him to qualify in like the teens or something. And I'm hoping qualifying gets rained out. That's already where my mind's at. Uh, Alex Labby, 6,400, 36 car. French is a LeBay. LeBay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> starting 18th, uh, 6,400. I have interest. It's a good yeah. car. Yeah. This- the same like his composite is 21 his qualifying speed was 17 um 
I, th I think he's one of the ones that finishes usually around where he starts. He's only had one top 10. 27% DNF rate. It's a little scary there. Um, his average yeah. finish is 23rd. So I, he'd, he'd have to qualify probably, I would say, 22nd or worst for me to consider him. He finished 20th last week. Yeah. I'll have to see who's around him to see if he can make up any more places. Right, and then you got to see if you land on 6,400 enough on your lineup builds. Uh, I think that's what will be the difference between him and maybe someone else. Harrison yeah, Burton. Yeah, I could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harrison Burton, Josh Berry, and Ty Dillon. Three drivers in the AK range. Three drivers um, didn't really run that great a lap practice times, but uh, certainly cars that – Finish inside the top 10 from time to time. Uh, your thoughts on these three? Uh, Harrison Burton's yellow because he's good, not great. Like he, you can see he's got top fives. He's got top tens. He's got a 9% DNF rate, which is really good. His average finish is 10. So if he starts around this top 10, like maybe in the high Anywhere, if he starts like 10 to 15, I think that's really a sweet spot for him because it gives him an opportunity to move up, maybe lead a couple laps, things like that. I don't expect him to win the race. Uh, Josh Berry, like he's this guy's been incredible. He's got one, he's, win, he's got three top fives, other than the yard job in Atlanta or wherever that was. <laughs> or, yeah. That was it. Yep. He nailed like, it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He nailed it. And then, um, <laughs> then, after that, like he, he's been solid and consistent, so I, I don't mind him at all. Yeah, uh, 88's good. Let's, you know, 19th in speed. He's got 11 composites. I, I know like the sheet has him finishing 25th, um, but that's probably maybe he just had some bad track history or something like, like that, previous here. So the best part about Josh Berry is that Miguel Paluto finished 34th last week. So. If Josh Berry and qualifying get rained out, 8,800, click your cash button and lock him in. And that's the one thing. I do, we didn't do a video last week, but I don't understand. Like, Josh Berry is having such a great season. He should be contending for a title. Why would they take him out of the car for a ring? I don't know. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. I'm sure Junior's probably going to bump him, too. Maybe they didn't think he was going to be that good, and they made these promises ahead of time. Yep. I still would have. I still would have gotten like a B team or something for him to go out there and, and and ride because like this this guy looks like he could be one of the future stars of this league. I don't yeah, think he's, he's ready to jump to a cup, but I think he's ready to be very competitive here when like Almendinger and um, Gibbs and Sindrick and everybody else moves up. All we need is Michael and Nett to retire, and then you could just give Josh Berry the one car. <laughs> that would be ideal. Okay. For junior motorsports. Uh, or you can just kick Noah Gregson to the curb and give him the nine. I mean, that's probably what should be done. But yeah. uh, any any interest in Ty Dillon? He's red for a reason. <laughs> just wanted to hear you say it. He was, uh, he was like in the Joe, Joe Gibbs car sharing with Ty Gibbs and like just absolutely horrible. I think he wrecked every time that he, he was in it. So now he's in an R motorsports car, which is still a decent team. I mean, he's a right. former, former cup guy and everything, thing, but I don't know. 82. I just, he's got a 50% DNF rate this, this year. The uh, only outcome you play him is if he's starting in the back of the thirties. Yeah. That's, that's probably it. And he's probably not even going to have enough points to qualify if, if it gets rained out. So, although he did race at Daytona, so maybe, maybe he, he does, uh, that would be the only only opportunities to play Ty Dillon for me. Did the 23rd uh, Jer car race last week? Uh, let me look. Yeah, Andy Lally finished uh, 18th, so he looks like that car's got some points, yeah. even if it does get qualified out. He's going to start 18th. I'm totally going to pass. Yep. Next up, we have Jeremy Clements, 6,700. This is fairly decent GPP play week in, week out, but he seems to be losing steam, finished 23rd last week. Any love for Clements? I, he's finished every race. Look at that bright green over here. Yeah, it's good. Right. 
that that is a thing of beauty here and the 13.5 if he qualifies 15th or less then at 6700 definitely consider him absolutely yeah i play him every week so i'm not going to start i'm not going to stop now uh but he did have a bad place differential past two races i believe but you know that he finishes the race so i like it Landing Castle uh, is changed into the six car from the four for JD Motorsports. I guess that is a more heavily invested car. We had spotted that out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think and it was more that they were trying to balance it out because you have got one really bad driver and one decent driver. So if you put the decent driver in both your cars, then you're going to have enough points to keep both of the cars qualifying for races. I, right. I think that's the end game right there. Yeah, so they flip flopped uh, him and the other car was uh, Mills, maybe. Yes. No, it's the, it's Ryan Vargas. Vargas, that's the name. Yeah, and we all know Ryan Vargas is a terrible driver. So, um, so again, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that this car is a worse car than the other one because they very well could have physically taken his car, repainted it, and call it the four car. So, right. Uh, uh, 77, yeah, 7,700 seems a little too expensive yeah. unless he's starting in the 30s. My, those are my thoughts. Correct. Uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Earnhardt's on the never play again list. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, me, me too. Like, I had a beautiful line with him in it, and it could have, like, if I picked any other driver, I think I, I would have, like, won hundreds of dollars. It's so yeah. frustrating. He is just a turd on the track. So, no thanks, Jeffrey. Noah Gregson, number nine car. Are we in or out this week? 9,600. Okay, so so he has the, the number one composite. He's been fast. He's been good. However, he's got a 36% DNF rate. Yep. And he finished dead last last week. No wins. Four top fives. Five top tens out of fifty percent in the top well of course because almost 40 percent of them he's been in the garage so first I don't or know. last noah gregson <laughs> yeah no uh, i mean in 96 <laughs> i can't do it unless unless he does start 36 yeah yeah because he's yeah finished last last week if qualifying gets rained out 9600 him and uh josh barry going to be two cars to keep an eye on if qualifying gets rained out those are going to be your back of the pack studs to roster along with hemrick but that's just not for me just, 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 <laughs> yeah eat it eat it fade it at the right spot and maybe you might make some money that's that's usually the case uh next up we have timmy hill 4500 any love mm depends on where it qualifies if i if i need it maybe a gpp if that unlocks some stuff he's parked a little bit too i think yeah I finished those. engine issues last week yeah no well i mean he's got an 18 percent dnf rate so that's not horrible but yeah I've, he, he's broke my heart a couple times I, I it just has to be the right situation he's not a priority but he's not a fade mike lynette 8100 no for me <laughs> well his composite's nine though so i mean it's just it all depends on where he qualifies if he qualifies like 26 like this and he's got uh the the algorithm only has him getting up to 23rd so yeah yeah for, for 8k i can um i can play ty dylan for only 100 more wow look at that no thanks uh no, but like, when... I, I know we're not like a huge fan of justin haley but he's only 200 less so you know, right. the much better driver. Right. Michael Lynette finished 11th last week. So if qualifying gets rained out, he's starting way too high. Either for that or I'd find a 300 for Jed Burton. Yeah, I like Jed Burton. Uh, spoiler alert. Next up we have, I lost my thought here, Joe I Groff think, Jr. I think pretty much the rest, like we can yeah. probably go through these here. There's really... These are BJ McLeod cars, um, most of the ones here. Parsons kind of interests me a little bit. I mean, he only has a 20% DNF rate. He might be usable in the situation. Um, nope. They're, they're actually, 
this is um it's hard to find the place the price play down here parsons may be it i don't mind playing colby howard from time to time i don't know maybe don't... it is joe Groff. yeah I finished 30th last week in Chastain. I actually keep an eye on Parsons because I think there was another owner or something that it, this might not be a BJ McLeod card. I think it was um, somebody else who's got a better car that's not one of these like well-known teams. So I remember reading something that was special about it. So I'm just going to keep my eye on him. Um, okay. I'm not playing him in cash, but anyways, okay. And then... Most Pretty of the much, rest of these guys, like yeah, they're, Jeb they're Burton and then the rest. Yeah. yeah, Jed Burton's like the only one down here. He apparently didn't really have a great qualifying run at thirty third, um, but his composite's ten. I, I doubt he starts in the thirties. Um, but again, that's why I have him as this color. He needs to qualify below tenth before I'd consider him because he doesn't really have the win equity. I mean, he did win the one race, but it was rained out. So, You're right. He but finished 10th last week. He has the zero for a DNF. So, I mean, I like that. Yep. Finished 10th. Uh, probably going to start 10th and finish 10th. 10th. We'll just call him Jeb 10th Burton. Yep. <laughs> uh, Galding, no. Vargas, no. Ware, maybe, but probably not. Cody Ware actually ain't too bad on that 17 in the Xfinity series. Right. I see you got him yellow, and I'm glad that you do have him highlighted. I've played him a couple times. It's actually worked. Now, it certainly can go south quickly. He can always have an engine well, issue. He's, but he's in exactly. Yaley's car, and Yaley's been pretty decent this year. He's exactly, been yeah. like top 15 to 20th. So, um, again, if he, if he starts in the 30s and he's got a chance to get into the high 20s or maybe to 20th or a little bit above, then – yeah. Again, no, it's all, well, all going to come down to like how much money do I have left for value plays and, you know, who who's in the best situation. Yeah, and Cody Ware might start seventh if okay. they go based on last week because of Cole Custer. Making, making a change here. What? He was horrible in practice. Like Tommy oh, Joe yeah, Martin, yeah, yeah. I, I thought would be maybe an intriguing GPP play oh yeah was, that's um, right that's right yeah the practice data was cool yeah, and yeah, he finished yeah. 35th last week yeah he could this could be a trap tommy joe could be a trap he might get qualifying rained out he's going to start 35th he's like oh but tommy joe martin's ain't bad experienced driver and then he finishes 35th <laughs> and everybody played him at 5200 yeah and don't take the bait kids don't take the bait Bailey Curry, 7,400 <laughs> or 74 car, 56K. Oh, he, 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 he's seen the track recently. Yeah. He wasn't too what bad. Did, what did he race. finish today? Yeah, I was going to, I'm going back to look about what he finished. Well, actually, we, we kind of made fun of him like in the truck race. I ended up playing him in GPP just because like where he ended up qualifying and, and stuff, it, it just, it actually nineteenth. It actually made sense. So my my dummy self invested too much in the Drew Dollar. I thought he was going to be a good play. Eh, it wasn't that well, he, good. He ended up in the backup truck because he wrecked it in qualifying or practice or something. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. That's what I. That's what I get. Okay. Well, and is there anything else to add on Xfinity? Not really. I, again, we're just um, going to have to see how things shake out with the qualifying. Uh, I really like the fact that it rained out because it didn't, it gave us an extra hour actually to work on lineups because had the whole qualifying thing played out, it would have probably taken about an hour for us to see what the actual starting lineup was before we could start making adjustments. But when it was ringing out right at the time it was supposed to start, that gave us an hour head start. So. Yeah. I, I appreciated it. Thank you, Mother Nature, for at least something this weekend so far. All right. Well, that'll do it for the Xfinity plays at Charlotte Motor Speedway. I am your host, TK Nation 47. That is Mega Ruler 31. Like and comment below uh, if you want to get to the core 
um, core lineups and then these updated model projections when we get uh, qualifying, uh, whether that is actually qualified or rained out in the tomorrow morning. Um, you want to get into that Discord. It is at, underscore, at FSI underscore DFS. That link is in that bio. So thank you. Enjoy tomorrow's Xfinity race when that does happen. And uh, thank you for listening.